Hello, everybody. It's Mr. Moore again. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, Teak's, uh, Teak's number 8.8a, which is, as you see there on the screen, writing one variable equations or inequalities with variables on both sides using rational number coefficients and constants. It's going to be related to 8.8b, which I'm going to make a recording about uh, shortly. But this one is going to focus on where we would write an equation from a verbal description and how exactly we do that and confirm that we have the right information. Now, if we take a look, okay, we're going to look at this particular example. In this particular example, we show that uh, the temperature in a city named Red Claw is going to be 70 degrees Fahrenheit and is decreasing at a rate of 2 degrees per hour. The temperature in Sakul is going to be 68 degrees Fahrenheit and decreasing at a rate of 1.5 degrees per hour. Now, we're going to write an inequation, I'm sorry, an inequality or equation that would uh, correlate to this problem where we determine that H is the number of hours until the temperature in Sakul is going to be higher than the, the temperature in Red Claw. So we need to identify words, first of all, and phrases that will indicate the situation is going to be represented by an equation or an inequality. So if you notice here, in the original description, we know that this is probably going to be an inequality because we want to determine when Sakul is higher than the temperature in Red Claw. So we would only use an equal sign for uh, an equation if the question were to say, tell us a time when they will be the same at that same um, given rate of decrease um, of either 2 degrees per hour or 1.5 degrees per hour. So we know again that this will be an inequality based on that one phrase. Now, Again, as it says, we're going to translate this situation into an algebraic equation or inequality. So if you notice here, we show the temperature in Red Claw being 70 degrees. It is decreasing, which we associate with subtraction, at a rate of 2 degrees per hour. So that would be um, symbolized by 2 times H. 2 degrees times the number of hours that we need to figure out. Same thing with Sakul, starting off at 68 degrees decreasing by a temperature of 1.5 degrees per hour, so 1.5 H. So when we set that up, it's going to be set up as 68 minus 1.5 times H being greater than or higher than 70 minus 2 times H. So the inequality, again, is written as 68 H, excuse me, 68 minus 1.5 H is greater than 70 minus 2 H or it can be written in the alternative where we compare Reclaw to Sakul, meaning that till it's a time where Reclaw is going to be less than, if we, as we notice the sign has changed, than Sakul. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and um, go over to another situation. Okay, this other situation basically is talking about a person running a business. As promised, we're looking at a situation um, that involves Mrs. Jimenez. So if we notice here on the screen, it says Mrs. Jimenez makes and sells monogrammed fleece blankets. It costs her $5.95 for the fabric for each blanket um, or her raw materials. And $175 per month is a cost that she incurs to employ or rent an embroidery machine. She sells her blankets for $29.95 each once they're done. So we need to write an equation or inequality to find B, the number of blankets that Mrs. Jimenez must sell to earn a profit each month. So this is going to be a very unique situation in that we need to be aware of basically several different terms here, one of which, or the main, is going to be the concept of profit, okay? So um, we're going to now switch over to our work. Don't you love the magic of YouTube? Now we have our work. As promised, this is going to be 8.8a, writing equations from a verbal description. Now, as always, normally, I'm going to have to write my WDIKs. The WDIKs stand for what do I know? What are those things that I know? First of all, the concept of profit is going to be very important to us. Okay, and I'm going to pull this down a bit. Okay, profit. As we know, profit is a key concept in this problem. Profit, of, as we know is going to be represented by the amount that 
uh, Mrs. Jimenez will earn from her sales and that amount exceeding the amount that she's paid for her raw materials and or, in this case, rentals of that embroidery machine. So pulling from the problem, we know that $5.95, she pays for her raw materials. Those are the things that she uses to make her blankets. Uh, we know that she is renting an embroidery a machine per month at $175. That's for her machine. Did I misspell that? Yes, I did. C-H-I-N-E. Okay, let's make that look a little bit better. Try it one more time. All right, I think that's better. Okay, now $29.95 is going to be the sales price per blanket. Okay, now however she figured out that amount, or that's just what she chooses to charge, she's charging $29.95 per blanket. Now, the things that we don't know, as it said in the problem, we need to find B. And B is going to be the number of blankets she must sell to make a profit. Now, let's go ahead and uh, put some other things that we need to make sure that we understand. To make a profit, We'll just call her Mrs. J. Mrs. J must sell more. And that's in terms of dollars. Then the cost to make the blankets. We can call it a blankie. Okay. Blankets. All right, now what we need to do next is we need to go ahead and write ourselves a framework. Now, I'm actually going to do this in a different color to make it a little bit fancier and pop a little bit more. Okay, so we know that we're going to do an equation frame. I think that I did this in some previous videos. Okay, the equation frame in this case is going to have seven boxes all of which may or may not be used, but we'll determine that in just a moment. Now, what I want to do is I want to make this side be representative of her costs and this side be representative of her sales. But we still have yet to uh, write down the equation or inequality symbol. Now, as we talked about, more than likely this is going to be an inequality because of the fact of the fact that we want to know um, when is she going to make a profit, okay? So her costs uh, right here must be less than her sales. So I'm going to go ahead and associate this with the less than symbol, okay? Now, when we are trying to find um, what our, our variables will be, again, those are the things that we do not know. We don't know how many blankets she's going to need to make. But what I do know in terms of her costs would be that she'll have $175 cost from that machine. Now, her costs, of course, are tied to the $5.95 for her raw materials. And we also, that will happen per blanket. So what I'm going to do, and I know I keep switching these markers, sorry. That's 5.95B, $5.95 per blanket plus her $175 must be less than what? The sales price per blanket. So that's $29.95B, okay? Now, we notice that we have a couple um, more boxes over here. So let's go through our list. Normally, the what do I knows will correspond to what's down here. So we talked about profit that's done. I've already associated 595. I've already put down 175. I've already um, uh, worked out my sales price 
we've dealt with our uh, variable, okay? And we know that in order to make a profit, which ties to that inequality symbol directly, we've already done that. So in this case, this is going to be plus zero, okay, or just nothing at all, okay? So we can go ahead and just scratch through that. So we don't need that. So let's go ahead and rewrite our equation. If we rewrite our equation, that's going to be 5.95b plus 175 must be less than 29.95b. Okay, so I know that I ran out of a little bit of space. So 5.95b plus 175 must be less than 29.95b. So what I want to do is I want to go ahead and associate the words because we need to get the essence. I tell my students we need to get the essence, okay? Say that French style. We need to get the essence of what the problem actually originally said by mapping out the wording, okay? So I'm going to write here Mrs. J, what we call her, buys material for each blanket, okay, and for each blanket is directly tied to B, okay, plus her monthly rental fee must be, or should be, in order to make a profit, should be less than, okay, her the sales price of each blanket and in parentheses I'm gonna be right here to make a profit okay so in this case one more time and I'm gonna make sure that it flows okay to make sure that we have this written properly Mrs. J, Mrs. Jimenez buys material for each blanket at five dollars and ninety-five cents per blanket plus her monthly rental of $175 should be less than the sales price of each blanket to make a profit, okay? This is the essence of what we're solving, okay? Now, 8.8a just focuses primarily on writing your equation. If we had gone through to solve this, this would have come up to be, and I'm going to uh, use my handy-dandy trusty calculator, um, it should have been, in essence, um, if I can turn this on, sorry, okay, uh, calculate, I already have it here, um, I did this before, it was, came out to be 7.29167 blankets, that's the, uh, she must make more than, so B should be more than 7.29, but we need to put this into context. Can she make 7.29 blankets? No, she's not going to do that. So it's either going to be seven blankets or eight blankets. Okay, so how many blankets must she make at the very least in order to make a profit? She must make at least eight blankets. Okay, in order to make a profit. Okay, and that was done through the magic of YouTube. So as always, if you have a problem with this, if you don't, uh, follow, please ask me in class or come to tutorials on either Tuesday or Thursday. And as always, I will see you tomorrow.